Welcome everyone, I'm Greg Schnell, the Canadian Technician, here to host the Market Buzz. This show looks at weekly setups across the U.S. market. Using the tools available on stock charts, we'll look for long time frame trades. Please subscribe to my articles and Twitter feed just to keep up as uh, things are changing along. So what we're going to cover off today, um, again, the market's trying to rally here, and uh, that's the good news after last week was a bit uh, down hard, so we had a nice bounce on Monday. Um, I mentioned it in multiple different sessions, but we have the Fed meeting next week and quadruple witching, actually, it'll be now this week. Um, so those are on my schedule is important. The quadruple witching marked the top and the bottom of the market here back in September and the low in December. We're going to go through the banks today because they don't look beautiful to me, but I think uh, it's important to be aware of them. Um, we're briefly going to scroll through tech leadership, and the reason I want to cover those off is some of the big companies aren't aren't really moving that fast. Um, I'll call it out of the Fang 7 or whatever. Uh, so we're going to go through those, and then the only other thing I'd like to cover off today is I got a nice question by email the other day on logarithmic versus arithmetic scales, and so we'll cover that off quickly uh, to try and show, try and help out with when to use which one. So first of all, let's uh, just get an update on the market here. And what we're seeing is the Dow is up 113, Russell's up, basically everything's up a half a percent, so that's pretty good. Um, watching quite closely here, because again, I think the market is starting to struggle, and we'll just see if I'm right or wrong. But uh, the, the main concern I have, let's just go to the S&P. So we're testing the prior highs right now. We'll, I, I wouldn't be surprised to see us try to break through this. Um, if we look back in September, this is exactly how quadruple witching finished right on that Friday. Uh, basically came through a previous high and got up and just stalled, then spent a week and couldn't get anywhere, and then down we went. So um, that's the kind of situation I'm watching for just to see how we respond at these prior highs. And again, we go all the way back through here. Maybe there's enough and this really starts to kick up. That would be good. But we're already getting some lower momentum here. So if we had a higher high here and this rolled over now, then we'd end up with what we call divergence. And that would be a clue that something's going on. Um, just in general, I don't really like this chart shape uh, on the weekly. I mean, as long as it kept going, that would be very bullish. We're right at the place where I would expect the market to fail here. So momentum on each peak gets lower as you go. And so this is the kind of place I'm looking for resistance. So one of the things I want to cover off, uh, well, first of all, let's just look at the bond yields. And this is, uh, I'll just update it for this morning. But one of the problems we're starting to have is this is all starting to break down to new lower lows. So this is the 10 year here. And other than right um, at the beginning of the year, but you can see even this morning we're wiggling lower. So as the stock market's going higher, yields are going lower, which means money's moving towards safety, right? So we're bidding up bonds as this is going. So um, I don't like the tension getting set up, and I guess we'll have to watch for resolve. I mean, the software area of the market is still one of the best areas to be in, uh, but I'm going to focus on these on the banks today and there's a reason I want to do that. So uh, let's go into edit mode and what we're going to do is get rid of these numbers on the front and sort everything by strongest first. Uh, I want everybody to be able to do this with ease. So um, just uh, keep following me. So we scroll to the bottom of the page, hit select. Over here is remove numbers from and we're going to just take all the numbers off the front of that and you for me, this is just something I like to do all the time is search and, and watch for the stocks uh, that are the strongest. So I'm going to sort by volume and sort by scooter ranking. What that does is puts the strongest stock first. And then we scroll to the bottom of the page and hit number in sorted order. And now we're going to have all of the stocks ranked based on the scooter ranking. Okay, so jump in, go look at 10 per page, and that gives us the ability to scroll quite quickly through these charts. So this is one of the nicest charts out there. And what we see here is a series of lower highs on these um, PPOs. This one's just starting to roll over, slightly lower than the prior one. But we've already got a, a rollover on the PPO where we've got a sell signal. That's not 
critical. I mean, this is uh, an Italian bank, if I'm not mistaken. And, and so um, we're testing this prior high breakout. Again, this is the strongest charts going back on the scooter ranking. Uh, this Brazilian one shot up, spent eight weeks going sideways, and has now pulled back below the 10-week moving average rollover on the PPO uptrend being, uh, well, this uptrend being broken and the uptrend off these two here, still some room to keep going. By the way, I'm trying to use the Apple cursor today rather than one called from a company called Pinpoint. So it's got the little glove. Uh, hopefully it's big enough. And if it's not, let me know and I'll go back to the Pinpoint cursor. Okay, so we have um, IBN, uh, ICICI Bank, which is, I believe, out of China. And this one is breaking out to new highs. So that's very bullish. And again, we're looking at the strongest banks first here, HDFC. This one is really nice. And the reason I like this one a lot is because we have this big downtrend and momentum breaking and we're starting to turn up right at zero. That's very bullish for me. I love that situation. And we're breaking out. We're trying to get through new 18-month highs. Full stochastic pulled back a little bit and wants to restart. So all of this looks good as long as we hold these breakouts above the previous level, call it 105. I'd be staying long. MSCI, this one just keeps running a uh, nice chart up to, up to the top and to the right. Now, here we go. So here we've got Royal Bank of Scotland. We've got a downtrending series of lower highs and lower lows. And we've come up here and we're right at the zero level. Histogram is making a slightly smaller high last week. So that just says momentum is waning. Uh, we still have three days left in this week uh, to finish trading this out. But we're trying to get through that prior high. So this one's pretty important. Um, Russia, basically, this is traded sideways for six or eight months. But look at the PPO right at zero there. This is the, if it was going to roll over, this is kind of where we'd expect it to do that. Here's Lloyd's of London. So with all the Brexit stuff, this is rattling up here. 330 and then 310 and now 334. So it's a, it got above this high. Just keep watching it. Notice where the where the PPO is. If it rolls over right at zero, that's kind of what happened back here. Uh, rolled over right at zero, and that was a relative thumping. And we're sitting right at that kind of spot now where we're trying to break through prior highs um, with no momentum and no volume showing up to buy this on the uptrend either. So a little concerning. Moody's Corp trying to break through prior highs has put in a significantly lower high last week. No big deal on the PPO. But if we can't get you know, pushing back higher here, that would be more concerning. So starting to weaken. I like this Franklin chart and the reason I the reason I like this one, um, we've got this horizontal level here right at 34. If we get through it, very bullish. If we don't get through it, you can stay away. And the PPO is right at zero telling us to be very, very cautious here. I want to get into some of the bigger banks right away, so I'm going to quickly scroll through. So all of these banks, again, watch the PPO. Lots of them look like they want to roll over right at this zero level, which is a concern for me. Uh, this is a beautiful chart just up and to the right. Uh, this chart trying to make a base here. Again, PPO right at zero level, very cautious about that. Um, Okay, here's fifth third. So here we go. We've got a horizontal level of support and resistance right at 28. PPO is right at zero. If this rolls over this um, area here, I would be extremely concerned because we'd have uh, basically the 40-week moving average in green here, which was support all the way up, now becoming resistance on the way down. And if it can't get back through here, this is very cautious. So a move above 28, I'm in, and a move below 28, I'm out. So literally, I'd have a fine line in the sand there. Royal Bank, this is a Canadian bank, RBC. And uh, what we see here is a series of lower highs. PPO rolling over, it's on its third lower high in the histogram this week. So really an important area. It's trying to find support with the 40-week. Bank of America, this one. Um, talked about it a couple of times, but again, lower highs sitting here and the PPO line is right at zero and at the downtrend. A breakthrough here, I'm much more bullish until it happens, I'm not. Bank of China, uh, Beijing, again, rolling over right at zero here. We're on fourth week of lower highs, really cautionary. This doesn't look great. Um, 
People's banks, same idea. We're lower highs here. Big pullback last week, trying to rally again. But we've got the full stochastics rolled over and the PPO is on uh, second week of lower highs. Bank of New York Mellon, um, again, making lower highs for the last six weeks, rolling over right at zero. Um, that's a huge caution flag for me. Uh, I will say the all of the um, CME group and that kind of stuff, those charts don't look strong either. So here's BMO, and we've got rolling over action again going on right at zero. This is not good for me. Um, don't like the look of that. Here's Barclays. This chirp is testing new three-year lows here. Um, we're trying to rally a little bit. We're still well below zero, but not a lot of momentum coming off the December low. TD Ameritrade, this looks like it's putting in a lower high already. PPO rolling over at zero. That's just textbook. That's not what I want to see. Uh, T. Row Price, um, same thing. Um, left shoulder head, right shoulder comes up, touches the 40 week, and a fail here would be a problem. Keep watching it. As long as it's climbing, you're great. Um, the indecision last week just starts to slow the momentum down. So if it's going to roll over at zero, this is where it would happen. Uh, Banco Santander, again, no real momentum coming out of the low, so that suggests to me we're probably going to go down farther. Westpac Bank and Corp, this one's now in a downtrend, and you can see how weak these charts are starting to get already. Uh, BB&T, this one just keeps making lower highs, trying to hold this 52 level. Um, a breakout above that would be bullish, but I don't think we're going to get there. So we did break this downtrend here. And we've had a nice move off the lows. We're right back at resistance, and we're on our second week of lower highs in momentum. Toronto, uh, or TD Bank, uh, rolling over right at zero, just very cautionary, big downtrend in momentum, much like Bank of America. Uh, U.S. Bank Corp, same thing, rolling over just at zero. Uh, lower highs on these PPOs. This is just classic um, breakdown stuff here. HSBC, this one's in a downtrend, no real uptrend, started off the lows, that's very concerning. Uh, Citigroup making a series of lower highs, stalled at the 40 week, trying to get above zero, we're about to find out if it's got any horsepower at all. Hasn't been any real buying showing up for work here if they were getting optimistic. And I do want to show one thing here just to take a quick break. Again, on these charts, the 10 week is breaking to new uh, 2019 uh, lows with the exception of the first couple of days and the 30 year is trying to hold in here uh, but as this chart gets weaker I think this is one of the reasons that I want to start being more aware of the banks uh, there's an old expression when the banks don't perform well uh, that's that should be news that there's bigger problems out there and so having all of these charts with such big downtrends PNC financial this one just keeps going lower again we're below zero no real haven't been able to get up to make a higher high. Australian bank chart, this thing's on a lower road for two years. BlackRock, um, trying to get through this 430 level, briefly shot up, pulled back. Again, looks to me like it wants to roll over below zero, no real buyer showing up for work. Uh, um, that's very cautionary to me. Zion Bank Corp, um, trying to get through this $50 level, rolled over, Stuck here just at the 40-week moving average, rolling over right at the zero. Downtrend line in momentum. JP Morgan Chase, we might have heard of this bank. It's kind of big. Anyway, uh, rolling over right at the 40-week moving average. Again, support all the way up on that thing, and now it keeps rolling over. I mean, I, I would never short these banks. They're just so big, and uh, you know, yield is fine, all that kind of stuff. But they're underperforming in relative strength. JP Morgan's about to make a new 52 week low in relative strength. That just doesn't work for me. And again, if it rolls over under zero here, I would expect a quicker move down on the banks. CME group, look at the scooter ranking starting to weaken to new 52 week lows. So this is starting to break down. That's um, not comforting. And again, the stock's in a big, beautiful uptrend. But I'm just saying I wouldn't be putting new money to work here because these are starting to weaken. This would be the first dip to zero here since the 2016 low. I want to see that hold. Um, it, it, don't get me wrong. They're nice charts. I'm just saying I'm looking to find out if people are all of a sudden expecting the economy to pick up and improve and the bank charts don't seem to be telling me that. So we've got this downtrend here on BNS. 
And this one really matches up with emerging markets quite a bit. They have a lot of stuff in Latin America. And this looks to me like it's just a series of lower highs and lower lows rolling over right at zero. Um, cautionary. Australia, again, downtrend. And there was a couple of Japanese banks that were farther up on this list before I reset the scooter rankings, and I noticed they've moved down quite hard. Here's Equifax below the 40-week moving average. Um, so, and I don't like these big gaps down on this chart, multiple ones of them. This this looks to me like this chart's starting to become more unstable. Uh, Crary, Credit Agricole, uh, lower highs in a significant way. I will say one thing, that the, the downward momentum trend is starting to break. If anything, this is a little bit encouraging, um, just that we, we're still making lower lows and lower highs, but I'd like to see this downtrend and momentum finally crack, and that might give us a clue that something's starting to improve. SunTrust right at the level here where if it was going to fail, this is kind of where it would roll over from, and that's kind of what it looks like the chart wants to do. You can see the scooter ranking started weakening here. So... Scooter, again, is comparing the stock to its peer group. In this case, almost everybody's a large cap. Um, and you can just see that they're starting to be, like this stock's only one of the 30. Um, its price action is only uh, better than 30% of the stocks out there. So rolling over here right at zero on all these banks is just not a, not a new scene I want to see. This is uh, the Intercontinental Exchange, and basically we're getting ready to test new 52-week lows even after we've rallied 20% in the market. Look at the PPO just going below zero. This is not what I want to see. Now, this is still a very smooth, even chart to the top side here, but um, I would say if this starts to break below 70, this could actually move down more significantly. Matessa San Paulo, uh, right up against the 40-week moving average, same deal. Uh, CBOE, you can just see this is a downtrend. Uh, again, it looks like it's getting ready to break to new 52-week lows. Morgan Stanley, uh, significant downtrend here. Any uh, A little bit of good news is that it's starting to rise up here a little bit, but again, the momentum is almost zero. Uh, so ha just having no real strength to get going is cautionary. I, I'd really need it to jerk through the 40-week moving average before I got any sort of uh, comfort level with it. Now, again, I don't expect these to fall quickly, but uh, just the fact that they're not turning up aggressively and really starting new bull market thrusts is the concern for me. Wells Fargo, that chart is just a series of lower lows and lower highs. Uh, we're about to test this downtrend right now. If it's going to roll over below zero, that would be another problem. So I, again, I think in the next couple of weeks, we get all of that. And we've got that quadruple witching on Friday and the Fed meeting Tuesday, Wednesday, to really see if these charts are going to sh change shape. Huntington Bank shares, again, lower highs, lower lows, and rolling over right below zero, right on the downtrend line. Nothing gives me confidence in that particular chart. E-Trade Financial, this one stuck below the 40-week moving average. Um, you know, marginal try to uptrend here, but it looks like it's going to roll over. Raymond James, same thing. All of these charts look so similar. Goldman Sachs um, rolling over, lower highs, lower lows. Big downtrend here that could be breaking. Let's just annotate that one. So again, what I want to check out on this chart is, you know, are, are we going to be able to start making new highs in momentum and change the trend of momentum? I don't think so. Anyway, so pretty important place on these charts uh, from my perspective until they really start to improve. Now, Goldman got a full stochastic all the way up at uh, 80, uh, which means it's up in the top range of where it was for the last 14 weeks. But again, looking at this chart, we had kind of three-week bounce off the lows and nothing for the last 10 weeks, even though the market kept going. So that gives me concern. Look at this relative strength trend, not great. So far, it's a little higher than it was at the end of December, but let's just call that marginal at best. Okay, um, let's go back into the... And here's Ameriprise. Uh, again, these charts are all rolling over right at zero. That's the reason I want to cover them off today. Here's the NASDAQ rolling over right at zero. It looks like PPO could even cross by Friday. We'll find out if it's that week. But anyway, lower highs, um, 
really testing the neckline at 75 here for um, a base. Citizens Financial Group, and you get it, these charts are getting weaker as we go down the list here. Here's Comerica. All of them have this rollover signature right at zero. So I'm looking for some improvement. If we don't get it there, that would be a big deal for me. Okay, I think we've covered off enough of them to, to show why I'm concerned. Let's jump into the um, the Amazon stocks. And you can see here's the 200-day moving average. Hasn't really been able to get going. Here's Apple. Uh, rallied for the last couple of days and everybody gets all excited. Still below its 200-day moving average. Facebook, you know, hovering in here. So while I'm... Um, well, I'm impressed with the move off the lows, 120 to 170. That's a pretty nice move. We're still only back to the 200-day moving average. Google, this has been a nicer move than anything, uh, 1125 up to 1200 in the last couple of days. So really nice. Netflix, this chart, let's go to Netflix. Okay, what we want to do, and again, the way you get to this, uh, so up here you can go NFLX. And then rather than having a sharp chart, go to gallery view and you'll get the defaults or if you've got um, new charts set up, you can go in here. But this is Netflix over basically since 25th of February, lower highs, lower lows, not a whole bunch of momentum going on. And you can see here on the chart, like nobody's really been bidding this up, even though the stock markets continue to go up and to the right. This thing hasn't moved since mid January. Stuck at prior highs, um, a bit concerning. And if you go here, remember how I talk about rolling over near the zero line? This has three or four weeks now of lower histogram. So starting to watch, and you can see nobody's really, whoops, nobody's really buying that volume here. This is really uh, quietly declining. So big indecision for Netflix um, as, as we start to see some of the other names trying to rally. Okay, uh, let's jump in and just go grab whatever, any stock, um, sorry about the scrolling, uh, any stock like the S&P 500. And what I want to talk about here is long term. So we're just going to go grab a weekly chart. Okay, so the way we control whether or not the scale is log is down here just with this checkbox. What you should see on a log scale is it's more compressed at the top and farther apart at the bottom. Now, um, We'll just hit update, and now we should see the scale be the same distance between everything on here. If I take something more exaggerated, and we'll just use NVIDIA to make this point, what you can see is on the arithmetic scale, everything looks quite normal. If we go back and now we choose to turn it on log scale, we should see these numbers compress significantly up near the top. Okay, and so it... What you want to see on a chart, um, when you draw a trend line, the difference between this and an arithmetic trend line, again, if we just go snap this line on this chart, you know, roughly it was breaking in here. I mean, you might have made marginally higher money here, 253 to I don't know, 292 is not bad. Uh, but as you can see, this started to go up and then dropped right off here and it dropped, I don't know, 60, 70% significant number. It's that change in momentum that we want to look for. So if we just don't save that change and then go in and look at a log scale or sorry, arithmetic chart, what should happen is that this trend line no longer works because it's going parabolic, right? So our trend line is in a whole different place. We had it back here before, and then there's room to put another one, I'll say in here somewhere. Just grab it like that. And, and so you start to see this parabolic move. Now we've come down and, and it's trying to break out through here. And don't get me wrong, I'm not uh, making any decisions on the stock here. I'm just saying the trend line changes because we've made the scale arithmetic. And so on a, it'll move $25 easier up near the top of this scale than it would have near the bottom of this scale is what an arithmetic scale uh, won't account, accomplish. So back here, a $25 move, uh, sorry, a 10% move was $2.50 at at $250, a 10% move is $25. So a logarithmic scale takes that into account. 
Okay, so that's important. Now, the second component is what if I wanted to put another um, price down here and we want to put whatever, we're just going to grab Amazon for the sake of grabbing it and we're going to make, uh, if I don't put anything after that, I'm just going to get Amazon and it's going to use an arithmetic scale. And the problem with that, let's just make this height one so that we can see it. And the problem with this is um, when we're looking at the chart, all of this looks insignificant on an arithmetic scale. Now, if we go and we go comma and then the word log, you'll get the chart that's logarithmic. And all of this now looks consistent in terms of the percentage move has been um, you know, pretty significant on the way up here. So the idea behind the log scale, and you can see how the scale gets compressed on the right-hand side, and we'll turn on the log scale now for NVIDIA. And you can see how both of these scales have compressed near the top. And for long time frame, large price movements, you want to use logarithmic. If you're looking at something like a bullish percent index, and I'm just going to go up here, dollar BP GDM, this is going to move between um, zero and 100. In this case, my default setting is logarithmic. It doesn't help on something that's going to move between uh, zero and 100. So then you could just turn it off and it'll be a much uh, more normalized look. Anyway, this is bullish percent, so high-low close bars don't really help. So looking at this, the idea being when you have something that's especially range-bound, like indexes or uh, something like that, then you can use arithmetic scales. But for long time frame work, you should use a logarithmic scale, and that way the percentage move in the last few months is the same as the percentage move from a couple of years ago, whereas it wouldn't have been the case otherwise. Okay, uh, just returning back to uh, the markets here briefly, the point I want to make uh, the most is as we approach these prior highs and come into um, options expiration day, I'm more worried um, that because the banks aren't doing well, the interest rate system, uh, you know, looks set up for us to weaken here. I'm expecting... Uh, the overall markets to roll over a little bit. Now, software is still doing wonderful. So make sure you're staying in what's working. Uh, that's a, a bigger, a whole bigger story that we need to talk about. So the, there's great software setups in there, but the banks are telling us to still be cautious. And I want to make sure that uh, everybody sees that uh, perspective rather than just following what the news is telling us about we're hitting new highs and we are the difference is is the banks are telling us there's still problems there so anyway with that i want to say thanks for taking the time to join me on market buzz market buzz airs live wednesdays and fridays at 10 30 a.m eastern 7 30 pacific time on stock charts tv you can also catch replays on the stock charts youtube channel or on stock charts tv which has a running list of technical charting information shows Thank you for taking the time to join me. Uh, good luck in the trading out there, and it should be an exciting week with uh, options expiration in the Fed. Thanks. Bye-bye.